morning, everybody. Welcome to Jesus is Lord. Uh, my name is Rick, for those that don't know me. And uh, thanks, God, thanks, guys, for checking in. Uh, my teaching last Wednesday, I've been doing this for a couple weeks now, and I'm really enjoying it. So I appreciate the people that take the time to uh, check the videos out. And um, the message today is on the mystery of Christ revealed. And it's just, uh, it's in Ephesians. We're still in Ephesians. We're going to chapter 3. Uh, there's so much there, I can't, I just feel like the Lord wants me to stay here right now. So, um, and actually I'm reading Ephesians at home. So as I go through the scriptures, it just, just some things on the page that just jumps out at me. And usually in most cases, that is the Holy Spirit speaking to you because he has something for us. So in, in his written words, so if something stands out, then you really go back to it and read it again and meditate on it. And it's kind of what I've been doing in Ephesians. So, um, I'm going to open in prayer. Um, again, um, I always say this, like, listen and try to concentrate on it as I pray because the Holy Spirit is just working through me. I, I, I'm not a, a public speaker. I haven't gone to school for any kind of training and stuff like that in, in public speaking. So it's the Holy Spirit working in me. So um, let's just see where he leads us today. Um, Lord, I pray that that we receive you today as a loving father who desires to pour out his spiritual blessings upon his children. And thank you for your written word. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Okay, let's all go. To, if you have a Bible or a Bible app, let's go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse, verse 1. And then I'm going to, I have a side note because Paul wrote uh, Ephesians and what a powerful transformation that Paul experienced. And, wanna, and you'll hear it as in his word as, he, as we walk through chapter 3. And I'm going to start in verse 1. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles. Gentiles is just, uh, that's who we are. We're, we're non-Jews. We're, we're just, um, you know, we're, we're not of the Jewish, Jewish background or culture. So we're called Gentiles in the Bible. If indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, God gave this, gave Paul something, and we're gonna, and I'm gonna go a little further, but um, Paul received something from God Himself, even as a, whew, he was so turned around by the law and the Pharisee of the law and his teaching was extreme in, in, in under the law, but he, God was speaking to him and gave, him some, gave Paul something personally to share with the Gentiles, us guys. Verse 3, How that by revelation he has made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already. That's why I titled this um, Mystery of Christ Revealed. I have briefly written already, Verse 4, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. He, he, it's Paul's heart for us to receive what God has revealed to him, specifically for the Gentiles, for us. So it's, it's really, really important that we really get into this word and, and receive what God gave Paul to share with us. In which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now being revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. Verse 6, that the Gentiles, us guys, should be fellow heirs of the same body and the partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. Man, Paul's out to spread the gospel, the good news of, of Christ and what he's done for us. Now this is when it Paul starts describing who he is, and then I'll go to my side note, uh, chapter 3, verse 7. Of which I became a minister according to the gift of grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. God's power is alive and well. He's doing a work in Paul right now. And, and again, verse 8, to me who am less than the least of all the saints. He couldn't put himself any lower. I mean, not that he's beating himself up and putting himself down, but he's trying to let us know who he is at, before Christ has got a hold of him. Okay, I'm going to read that again. To me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Now, 
my side note is this is this describes Paul uh, and start and he was Saul before he became Paul. Remember that Paul was a Pharisee and that he was sent by the high priest to Damascus to arrest Christians and return them to Jerusalem as prisoners, prisoners, or even possible execution. This would. This is what Paul was doing before he had the, um, the experience on, on the road to Damascus. Before, Paul, before Saul became Paul, he was on the way to Damascus and was struck by a brilliant light, fell to the ground and heard a voice from heaven, which was Jesus, ask him, why are you using violence against me? And Paul ended up blind for three days, and he was led to a place by the, the men that were with him. The Lord sent Saul to a man named Ananias to lay hands on him to restore his sight. The Lord called, called Saul, who became Paul, a chosen vessel. As messed up as Paul was under the law and, and a Pharisee of the law, he, Paul, God didn't give up on him or, or look at, looked at him like, you're, you're, you're an enemy of mine. No, just the opposite. God looked at Paul as a, as a chosen vessel. Like us today, we may have done some things in the past, and we feel like we're not even worthy to even enter a church or um, pray a prayer and expect God to answer. But no, it's actually just the opposite. Jesus came for the lost, you know. Um, and we, before Christ, you are lost. I tried to explain it last time, I, last Wednesday, about being in, a, in darkness in the world and being led by the ways of the world and what seems right to man. So um, I'm just mentioning that just uh, we, we are all worthy. God has, we are, we, if you listen for the voice of God, you're going to become a chosen vessel, just like me standing here today. Um, I, th I just feel, and I was telling the guys earlier, that, um, Pastor Mike's son said, I feel like I belong here, and I can't even explain it. It's because it's the spirit in me that's doing a work, and he's given me this unction to want to come and speak on a Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. It's just, it's all, it's the same thing, and each, each one of us have a, some kind of calling from the Lord, and, that, and you got to seek it out. I'm going to go on to verse 8, chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8. And, no, no, I'm sorry. Let's go down to verse 9. And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. Verse 10. To the, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and darkness in the heavenly places. Um, I'm going to keep moving, and prayfully, we're all going to get, including me, as, as, we, as we read on. According to the internal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, he, he had a purpose, God had a purpose, and he sent his son, and we're going to talk about that at the end. I usually do cover uh, why Jesus came, you know, for the forgiveness of sins. And it was in God's heart, God the Father, the Creator, he purposed in himself to send Christ as a man, fully God, fully man, on this earth to, to dwell amongst us. So we, we, couldn't, we shouldn't miss this, guys. We, we, we really shouldn't miss this. Verse 12, in whom we have boldness and access through covenants, through faith in him. Kind of reminds me when the veil was torn. And now we can enter into this holy place with confidence and boldness because God thought so much of us and loved us so much, he sent his son to die for our sins. Once you confess that in your heart and you believe it, then you have access. You can call it a holy place. Every time you sit down and pray at home or in a quiet place or in, the, in your thoughts as you're working or whatever you're doing, you're entering into a holy place. It, it, it's, it, it, it's so cool and I, I love it. Um, it's changed my life. Verse 13, therefore I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. This is Paul went through some tribulations, guys. He, he was beaten, shipwrecked, left for dead, uh, stoned, uh, hungry. But he, 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 that was his tribulation. 
But he was going to walk out this task, this, this, um, what he, it was a, he was chosen to give us the gospel, the good news, at any expense, even of his own life. So that this is what he would say in there. Verse 15, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be, now this is good, according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That, that, that's us. God's power, his spirit working through us in, in the inner man, our heart, um, Verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love. And that's what I talked a little bit about last Wednesday, our faith, this faith in this unseen God, this power this, that can move mountains, dwells in us. And, and Paul is going through you know, some trials and tribulations to, to make sure we get this. And, that's, and he put it in this writing. I'll read it again. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love. And if you're rooted and grounded in love, you're going to do things. You're not going to just stay in the shadows or in the background because the, you're going to feel that boldness and, 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 and courage to get out, kind of like I'm doing today, uh, speaking on... Um, there's something in me that's giving me this, like, the confidence, and, and not that I'm some great speaker and all that. It, it, it doesn't really matter. God is, is, will call you out and send you out. It could be on a missions trip. It could be uh, start going to church and you end up teaching a Sunday school class, stuff like that, uh, help out in a soup kitchen. It, it, the list would get on and on. Um, but... Uh, you have a calling, and that's what this is all about. Paul's trying to describe this power, and it's gonna, and he wants it to, he's trying to get it in our hearts through his word here. Verse 18 may be able to comprehend with all the saints. Now we're talking about trying to understand who God is to me. What is the width? and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Man, that's huge. I'm, I'm serious. I got to read that again, verse 19. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. So hang in there. The love of Christ is so deep if you can only imagine him sending his son, his only begotten son, to to die for our sins so we could be restored back to him. Once we were separated, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, and we basically died to Christ, we were separated. Um, it's kind of going, it's kind of trying to go back to the place where, to understand that love, he didn't want us to stay separated, so that's why he sent Jesus. But it almost passes knowledge. It's hard to imagine like if you had a child and you're going to sacrifice that child for other for for a stranger and even a stranger that was sinning against you that's a, that's the love of God and that's why it passes our knowledge we can't it's hard to even wrap your mind around that verse 20 now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us there it is again that word power it's in here like numerous times, this power, and we talked about it almost every time I get, uh, stand here, it, there is power, guys. It, it's hard to even explain. It's like um, exceeding and passes my knowledge of why I am the way I am. But what gives me this unction or this, this, this urge to get up here and do this, I, I don't even fully understand it. You know, but it, this is it, so it's a power that's working in me. Um, verse 21 To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Um, oh, I'm going to read that again. Verse 21 to, to him be glory, to Christ be glory. Hallelujah. Raise your praise him, like thank him. When you open your eyes in the morning and you wake up, you should thank God 
for, you know, for waking me and keeping me healthy and whole. Lord, actually, I say that before I eat my egg and eat a bowl of cereal and walk the dog. I, I thank, I'm in thankfulness, even if it's not a perfect day in the, in the natural, like say it's cloudy and maybe you did catch wind of some bad news that people seem to be sharing daily to, for, um, I don't even understand it. I like to stay away from news myself, but um, I, I don't know. It's like you, everything aside, you, if you concentrate on God or you have a prayer in the morning, it's a perfect way to start your day. Um, it's like, it takes you to a place where it, it separates you from the world. So worldly things aren't going to affect you because you're in a spiritual mindset. You're you're praying, you're talking to this, this invisible, unseen God. Uh, and it would make sense that you would, uh, wouldn't let the, 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 the news of the world or the, um, the darkness of the world to get on you. Because you're not really, you're just, the Bible even describes that we are aliens here, actually. We're just visitors. Once you become a member of the household of God, a child of God, and you're adopted, and you, you're sold out, your heart is for the Lord, you, you, you pray, you read scripture, you go to church, with a, and joyfully, you give, you tithe or whatever, and, and stuff like that, you, you're, you're just sold out on Christ. It, the world is not going to mess you up. You're not going to be depressed and taken, taken out by bad news as bad as it is in the world now, and everything seems to be going, and it's in Scripture and Revelation, especially what's going on in the world now. It's um, it's just the ways of the world, and it's 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 a wide path to destruction. But you chose to walk with Christ and surrender your heart to Christ, so you're on that narrow path uh, to righteousness. You you chose to stay on that narrow path, and it may not be easy all the time. But that, that's the, the path we have chose as believers. And he'll get us to where we need to be. And it's an awesome journey. So I still feel, again, this will be the third time I've spoke. But I would like to go through the, the, the prayer of salvation um, because it's so important. And it's actually um, a prayer that I, 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 especially being in youth ministry for years, I, I kind of narrowed it down the best I could so it would be easy to speak and easy to understand. But without your salvation, without the forgiveness of sin, guys, you, you're not going to enter into heaven no matter how good you are, how hard you try, and how nice you are, and walking old ladies across the street and doing good deeds it is not going to get you into heaven. It just, it just, it's just not going to happen. So... You have to surrender yourself to Christ, and you have to ask for forgiveness of sin. So let, let's walk through it again, guys, and um, and 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 go back and listen to this again, or and uh, make sure that you understand what what the sinner's prayer is, or the prayer of salvation. And it goes like this: Lord, I know I have sinned. I believe in my heart you sent your Son Jesus to die for my sins. And Lord, I receive your forgiveness today. From this day forward, I promise to live my life for you. And thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And, and it's so important, guys. You, 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 eternity, there's eternity in hell without Christ and forgiveness of sins, or there's an eternity with the Heavenly Father and Jesus forever it, to eternity. So you, we, we have to make a choice and um, please, choo please choose Christ. And, uh, and I thank you guys for your time. God bless.